Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So good morning once again and welcome to our class on Christian counseling. Uh, so glad that all of you could join in here. I'm sure we're all enjoying the grace of God uh, being helped and blessed by him through our daily work and our activities. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the uh, e-learning students as well. Uh, thank you for joining in. Thank you for the interactions that there have been uh, in the uh, on the uh, uh, forum, the dis discussion group. Uh, I must uh, say, uh, students that uh, online students that a lot of your sharing and questions are really helping. Um, you know, students who have not joined us here but are part of the e-learning. So continue to interact. Continue to you know, share your thoughts and your observations. You're actually really making this a wonderful classroom for those who are not able to join us. So welcome once again, everybody, and uh, looking forward to another good two hours of learning and uh, hearing from God uh, through this specific ministry. Let's just start with a word of prayer and we'll, um, we'll move right in. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that you have brought each one of us here in your presence. Lord, wherever we are, part of different parts of the world, Lord, we thank you that you have given us this opportunity to connect in such a way to learn. Lord, thank you because all wisdom and knowledge comes from you. And Lord, even as we look further into this specific ministry of counseling, we pray, God, that you will open our eyes to who you want us to be as effective helpers and ministers. Lord, even as we are going to be looking at the Christian counselor today, Lord, we pray that you will prepare each of our hearts to be what you want us to be, Lord, as we extend our love and our compassion like you did to those around, equip us, we pray, in every way. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so a um, <clears throat> quick recap about what we had done the last week. Um, we had, uh, you know, just started uh, to understand about what counseling um, is and what Christian and biblical counseling is. We looked into some of the core elements um, of biblical counseling and uh, we also focused uh, a little on basic tenets of effective biblical counseling. I hope you all did take time to read through your notes, go through the scripture uh, and stay in on track with, uh, with what we are learning. So today our we're going to be, um, our focus on today's class was, is going to be on the Christian counselor. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, two specific aspects. One is what, what are some of the qualities or traits that a Christian counselor needs to have? And second, we're going to look at what are certain principles that a Christian counselor needs to abide by as they... Um, engage in a, in a counseling relationship. Okay, so before we get started, I'll just like to um, share my uh, screen. Uh, are you all able to see the presentation in full screen? Not yet, ma'am. Not yet? <coughs> no, ma'am. There's, there's an issue. Just a minute, please.
Are you all able to view it now? Yes. Yes, Master. Yes? Okay, great. Yes, okay. Okay, good. All right. So before we get started, I, I just want to open up a question to you all and uh, uh, have you think about this, this question. Like, um, there may be some of you who've probably approached counselors or someone who you really wanted uh, help or direction from. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at more at someone uh, as a counselor that we we are, are defining rather than you know getting uh, advice or help from a friend or uh, maybe you know it it a lot of those characteristics are also needed you know when you're even helping someone uh, not as a counselor but maybe as a guide or as a uh, as a mentor but i'd like you to tell me when you approach somebody when let's say you have a pressing need um, and uh, you you either want some kind of clarity or you want some help or there is some direction that you're looking for what would what would you be really looking for in the person how do you expect to feel comfortable or to feel um in a state of wanting to continue that conversation with this person so what would your expectations be of the person who you would approach for um, the help of a direction. Yeah, you could either m mute, you could either unmute and uh, uh, tell me what you think, or you could even put it down on chat and I will, I'll ensure that I read that out. So Elisha has said, um, Elisha has responded, they should be trustworthy and a confidant. Um, uh, Chaya says they should be mature and they should be trustworthy. Okay, I'd like to understand what do you mean by the word trustworthy? What would you mean by the word trustworthy? So I'm sure we all have different uh, understandings. So, you know, um, interact and put it out as to what you think you need, uh, yes, you would like to see. Can yes, Abhini. Uh, someone whom we can confide in, like we share our... Uh, concern they may keep it to themselves and be able to help without judging as well as have a listening ear like okay uh, someone you know many many times they may not have a, a word to say but when someone hears us uh, that itself helps us uh, many times and uh, excellent good so so avni said a couple of things she said someone who um who is open to listen, who's willing to listen to what you have to say. The second thing she says is someone who will listen without judgment, who will not pass uh, any kind of a bi bias or an opinion on what you are saying. And the third thing that she said was someone who will keep confidential what the person is sharing. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, Samuel. Samuel's written to be able to understand the things I say as well as the things I don't. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, and and we're going to be learning a lot about this. How do we assess and how do we pick up things? Not just that is verbally said, but is also that is non-verbally communicated. So, so absolutely. So you would like someone. Who would um, who would be perceptive about not just what you're saying, but maybe even probably certain things that you are also displaying? Okay, excellent, good. Uh, I think Chaya said uh, someone who's a good listener. Add. Yes, yes, please go ahead. No, along with what you said, Pastor, about non-verbal, but also um, it it may not be non non-verbal also. Um, but it could be like I'm, I'm trying to say something. Like, let's say I'm just describing my situation. But uh, underlying that um, could be things like, you know, I'm, I'm maybe an insecure person or I am uh, 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 an introvert and all of that. Um, and it could be because of something that's happened to me like, long ago and all that so so maybe non-verbally also i'm not expressing um or verbally and and this is what i what, what intrigues me about a counselor and probably a formal education in counseling and and when i see myself uh, as a counselor i think this i found find myself a limitation into um i think uh, for me a counselor is someone who would be able to 
uh, you know, just by listening uh, to a person speak uh, and and open uh, open open up, um, of, I think a trained uh, or an experienced counselor would have the wisdom uh, to 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 really sense the deep underlying issues, which may be coming out through the verbal and non-verbal, but which may not be even coming out. But to be able to do that, and and yeah, so that's those. That's what I was trying to say. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'll I'll maybe give an example to what um, uh, Samuel was trying to communicate, like um, like what he was saying was that probably there are some things that the person says or does not even say, but it could have underlying uh, undertones to it, right? Like for example. Um, you're talking to to uh, a person, and the person says, um, uh, um, "You know, uh, yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, you know, I do a lot of things at home. Um, uh, you know, I ensure that I make, um, I manage my home very well. Um, uh, uh, I, I guess the others really don't. Uh, you know, have more far more important things to do than probably to help me." Okay, so a sentence like this is um, the person hasn't said anything much, but then it is laden with so much of content that, uh, like uh, um, Samuel was saying, an experienced counselor or someone who intently listens picks up on some of that and either probes or um, responds or you know uh, comes to a place where they engage in something that is unsaid but probably is meant so um, absolutely i think what uh, samuel said is is perfectly right and we're going to be looking a lot into that about how you clarify and you pick up and you respond to even things that have not been explicitly said okay Good. Uh, I think Rose has uh, written, someone who is genuine in, in really intending to help, one who, someone who can seek refuge to when there is no one else who can seem to put aside time for you. Okay. All right. Good. Avni has said, someone who's rooted in the word and see things through the lens of the word. Okay. Shri Kumar has said, wise, knowledgeable, friendly. Uh, Avni has written, available. Chai has written, spiritually mature. Prabhakar, um, you've written, the one who have and can see the issue or problem and are able to give a right or a definite solution or direction in the way that suits the counselee. Okay. Uh, Christopher said, someone who has a knowledge and experience of the current world we live in. Yes. Okay. Good. So, excellent. So, yeah, we all do see um, what we would like or what kind of a person we really expect to have um, as as a counsellor. Now, I would like uh, to add. Oh. Yes, sure. Mena, who's speaking? I cannot see it because I, I can just see a few tiles. Mena, who's speaking? Ma'am, I'm Prabhakar. Yes, Prabhaka, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to add, uh, throw a light on certain incident uh, happened in Bible. It's just an example of a wonderful counselor, how, uh, what Jesus is like. Uh, I remember the incident when um, people are like stoning a woman uh, who, who, uh, who was caught like doing sin. And they were like about to, you know, uh, throw a stone and uh, she was running and running and uh, uh, it came to a place where Jesus was sick like there available and um, people stopped uh, stoning and asked a question and uh, Jesus like she sinned um, uh, according to the laws of the you know the old covenant but uh, Jesus said those who didn't sin uh, 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 throw a stone at her first and so everyone left and even Jesus, who is trustworthy and a wonderful counselor, didn't even uh, judge her from by her past and um, didn't say anything, just said one thing, do not sin again. And she, he left. So that's the moment when 
her life was turned around so sometimes being a good counselor uh, doesn't need to speak more you just need to understand and uh, just need to you know do not judge on their past uh, life and uh, we can learn a lot from that particular incident where uh, being a counselor means to just get into uh, have a good empathy towards them and encourage them not to uh, involve in those things and just move ahead in life and uh, with good intentions and um, motivate them so uh, i think uh, her life was totally changed by that a simple uh, gesture though he saved her from those people and also didn't judge her um, so that's the way i mean we can take uh, key notes and we can also sit with them talk to them and understand because trustworthy in hindi it says vishwas yogya so Uh, it mm. itself says vishwas yog ki those um, the person whom we can believe i mean mm. and, and trust blindfoldedly i mean without an ounce of a doubt where we can share our heart out and without a fear of being judged or being dictated or being you know something so that's the my point of view from the biblical uh, perspective so to i mean as a uh, sister rupa said this to speak the truth in law so that's very true thank you thank you thank you thank you so much prabhaka thank you for sharing and um from from jesus ministry in fact you know if we could actually if we really did have time uh, actually one of the lessons was that but because of a, of a lack of time was to actually take a couple of um uh ways that jesus ministered to people and see how you know what were some of the qualities that he showed but then that's what we've kind of put up in 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 a small uh, gist over here um but thank you yeah uh, i think even rupa and uh, uh, rupa has mentioned empathy as well as being able to speak the truth in love okay wonderful okay so uh we will go through some of the qualities of of a counselor we've got certain scripture also that that's there i'm um, on page um 5 in the in the book so if you'd like to follow along please uh, go ahead and we can we can follow along okay so certain elements of a of a christian counselor we're going to just look uh, a lot more in in detail in some of this okay and what does this mean as we <clears throat> look through some of the scriptures that is uh, that is put in so the first one is yes someone who is spiritually mature and um, you know timothy talks about um, someone who is ministering okay but we've taken the principle out of that that the one who uh, who is who is the watcher of a soul should be someone who shouldn't be an amateur or someone who who is comes newly in the faith or someone who's who's a, a new believer or someone who's newly converted or instructed but someone who who has been seasoned in in the word who has been seasoned in in living a christian life in uh, working with with a community of believers with having a strong relationship the anointing of the holy spirit so someone who is spiritually mature is um, is one of the greatest elements of of being a a, a christian counselor uh, when we look at uh, Uh, spiritual maturity a lot of disciplines uh, uh, spiritual disciplines come as a result of our uh, as we build our relationship with god and someone who has themselves um been through different struggles and issues in life and been able to exercise their faith and exercise their reliability and dependence on god as they move through those life situations uh, uh so uh, so it, it does that mean that has to be key no but we do understand that there are uh, every one of us being in <clears throat> in in this world system have gone through challenges of different kinds and how we uh, we have tied the through those Uh, situations really matter and uh, and how we tie through it with the help of god with our faith being worked in and with our faith being in place um 
so uh, so I, I remember I, I think I, as a you know as a personal story I must uh, must say that before when you know when when I did just get into the profession of of counseling and uh, so so I started off more in in a secular form where you know I learned about uh, a counseling and um, understanding the principles of it, and then you know began to to look more into scripture and what my role is, you know, as a, as a believer, as a, as a Christian, and uh, it th that was some of the things that actually really helped me through to know that. Uh, you know, there are many situations that may occur in our lives, right from our childhood, our adolescence, and as, as we've gone through. And how have we approached in understanding these uh, specific events or experiences in our life? So ha has it come from a place of um, resignation or bitterness, or is it uh, you know, as you spend more time in your relationship with God, does that change for your better? So if I look back, if I, uh, as of now, if I look back, I can't thank God enough for those very many experiences that um, I was put through, as negative as they may be, they are the ones that, that has actually shaped and built my confidence and my understanding of what scripture is. So uh, I remember growing up as a child with an extremely poor self-esteem because of certain experiences and events that I went through. And um, that was one of, one of my main desires was to understand uh, you know, the mind and understand why these things affect behavior. And that's what took me to this place of, uh, of understanding about psychology and counseling. But then as I kept learning, I began to see how, um, uh, how you know, how, how wonderfully wealthy it was, but yet it did not touch into the depth of maybe certain situations or the depth or the core of the heart. But it was more when I kept looking back at scripture and um, certain, you know, certain things that God had been speaking to me, it made, uh, it made things so much more effective. And it was, and I, I can, I can testify for the fact that it was only because of the word of God that a lot of negative thought patterns that was part of me in my earlier days has been changed, has been renewed, has been transformed only because of what God spoke about in his word. And that I believe is also maturity, you know, a, a, a Christian counselor learning through their own experiences and coming to a place of faith, coming to a place of discipline and maturity, learning from the word, um, absorbing the word into themselves helps them to become a, a, a better helper. So being spiritually mature is is something that is needed for for a Christian counselor. Also, um, so this this moves us into our next point: is someone who is being who is grounded in Scripture, someone who knows Scripture. So, and and I think it's just not reading of Scripture, but also being able to meditating on it and you know memorizing it um, for the essence of what it brings, because you know. Uh, when, when we look in scripture, it, it talks about how much, um, you know, God desires for us to be delighted in his word or delighted in the law of his word. Like Psalm 1 talks about, you know, that they, he delights in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. So how you delight in it, which which brings you to a place of grounding of, of scripture, that everything comes as a result of what you're learning in scripture. Uh, there are many other references that are given in your notes, but I just want to probably uh, highlight a couple more. Like in John 17, 17, it says, um, you know, be sanctified in by the truth of God's word. It says, make them holy by your truth, teach them your word, which is truth. So you become sanctified or you're made holy only by the truth. So as a Christian counselor, 
you 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 cannot expect to um, uh, lead people if you do not know what scripture has to say or if you are not grounded in the word and and this is this keeps developing over and over and over and I, I, I don't think we ever reach the end of it you know uh, every time I think all of us may be reading the word we understand there is so much to know so much to understand and so much of a revelation that comes about through each time that we uh, that we um, uh, read scripture okay uh, again being grounded in scripture is also not just knowing scripture but being transformed by it uh, like Romans 12 2 says being transformed by the renewing of the mind and not conforming to the world and its ways so the more that we are grounded in it, the more that we will see we are transformed in our inner man as well as we are transformed in the kind of support and help and wisdom and knowledge that we give somebody else. Okay. Uh, again, uh, scripture talks about how we are called to meditate on that which is Philippians 4, 8, on that which is true, uh, noble, just, pure, lovely and of good report. That's what we are called to do, to be able to come to a place of meditating on things that are hopeful. And, um, you know, even as you listen to stories of, of people, sometimes uh, um, it, it, can, it can actually, and, and, and this is, I'm, I'm telling you out of from my own experience, and some stories can make you feel uh, you know, it appears a very hopeless situation, you know, almost things that, that will just not work. But this is what scripture says, meditate on that which is true. Meditate on that which is lovely and of good report. So uh, that which is just. So maybe you're not able to do it. Uh, sorry, your, your counseling may not be able to do it, but you are extending your faith for that of the counseling. So being grounded in, in scripture and uh, knowing God's word really um, uh, is, is, is a helpful tool. Okay, because even Hebrews 4.12, that the verse that says the word of God is living and active. So that is what uh, will, will pierce and penetrate through every situation, uh, you know, whatever the intents of the person's heart is or whatever the thoughts are. It's the word of God that actually brings about that change. So being able to use this knowing that um, you know we're not fighting against flesh and blood but we are fighting against principalities and powers of darkness and we um, as as uh, uh, God's people has the divine power um, because of his name to destroy those strongholds in by the power of uh, of God's word so to be be able to use that and uh, and uh, help clients with it so the the very important point of being grounded in scriptures. The third one is being prayerful. Now, uh, there isn't, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, um, a shortcut to this. And I think one of the biggest examples that we can see is, or the earliest examples we can see is the account of Enoch. You know where where it says that uh, uh, Enoch was he he was known as one who walked with God, okay, and uh, so the one who walks with God uh, is someone who com communed with God, who was always in a relationship with God, and those who walk with God will also practice those spiritual disciplines so so reading the word being um, uh, coming to god in prayer is an absolutely important thing and uh, scripture you know wherever we look we do find that uh, we are encouraged to devote uh, our our lives in prayer and uh, colossians 4 2 says that you know uh, keep yourselves in prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. And one of the biggest examples that we see um, uh, in Jesus's ministry is the way that he got away from every crowd, every pressing ministry for times uh, to spend away with God. And sometimes it was even 
the whole night or in for a couple of hours and that's something that's an example that we take so as counselors each of us needs the spirit's help in understanding different details either of the counselee's problems or the emotions that they are going through or things that they have not really articulated and let's face this truth that we need the spirit's help in using wisdom to help anyone who comes to us and and we know that it's only the spirit <laughs> who can give us that needed uh, insight and um, revelation to motivate for some for 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 change so um, you know and and i think even as we we are um, talking about this point on prayerfulness. We're saying we must also be in a place where we can pray in the spirit, you know, we're speaking in tongues, because as we do that, we're speaking mysteries that maybe our mind doesn't understand. And you're, you're, as you're speaking in tongues, you're also speaking something for your counselee, or it's it's either a wisdom that you're calling forth, it's it's a comfort, it's a strength. Um, we don't know, but but just praying in the spirit um, is something that. Uh, that that we need to do so there are times that that uh, uh, you know when when counselees do talk to me and i have no direction or idea as to how this is going i just i mean my attention is there um but then i am in the spirit time i'm actually praying i'll say holy spirit you know uh, this is this is not my realm right now. I don't even know what's going on. So just just moving to a place of speaking in tongues uh, under my breath and under I mean not definitely observant to another, but uh, you do see that the power of the Holy Spirit walks in, and it helps you go through um, um, you, you know whatever. Uh, situation that you you are you are facing at that point of time. So engaging with the Holy Spirit, even at a time um, when your counsel is sitting. So I, I remember um, there was one teacher who, who said, who told, uh, I, I remember him saying that, you know, when he counsels, he's got one eye on the Holy Spirit and he's got one eye on the counselee. Okay, and just like how the Holy Spirit has one eye on me and has one eye on the counselor, right, to keep our attention on the guidance and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So taking time to pray for your um, counselees. And um, uh, I think as, as a practice, something we should probably do is every time that we meet with someone, you know, if you if you're not in a position to pray with them directly, uh, or, uh, you know, openly, then it is important to, you know, do that before your session or after your session and uh, cover that entire um, session uh, in, in God's grace. Okay. The next one is a counselor needs to be a giver of hope. A counselor needs to, sorry, uh, yeah, a counselor needs to be a, a giver of hope, okay? And uh, when we're looking at uh, the word hope, you know, uh, scripture talks about how when hope is deferred, it makes the heart sick, okay? But when there is something that is fulfilled, it is like a tree of life, okay? We, we uh, hope is something that is so important, Um for any one of us and those who come for counseling are often in, in a very deep sense of pain and a sense of a heartache uh, you know they've had a lot of people would have had very shattering life experiences or they may be going through different situations which um which can be very significantly distressing and and uh, um, debilitating for them and sometimes they they face these for years and they have come to a place of hopelessness or others have failed over and over and over again, and, and they may need that sense of hope. Uh, you know, some people may have all their hopes broken repeatedly, and others maybe just have given up. And this is what scripture talks of, how God is the one who offers us offers us hope, the living hope that we have in, in, in Christ Jesus. So what does hope do? 
uh, sorry, what does hope do? Hope, number one, it gives us confidence. Uh, yeah, it gives us confidence. And when we when we look at that scripture um, of hope giving us uh, confidence, the scripture that talks about is that we have boldness. When we have the hope that we profess, we have a boldness. So hope actually gives you boldness to deal with whatever issues or struggles that you have. Hope produces joy. Okay, the uh, it, in Proverbs uh, ten twenty eight it says the hope of the righteous will be gladness. Okay, the hope of the righteous will be gladness. So whenever there is hope, there comes a joy that is not transient, but something that will continue to remain. Hope produces perseverance, where where perseverance is being able to come to a place where you continue continuing on okay um, so in, in Romans 8 25 it says we hope for what we do not see we eagerly wait for it with perseverance um, so if the you know if if any of you did follow the last uh, Sunday sermon it talks about how hope comes first you need to be in a place of hope about what is going to come and only and only and from there is where you exercise your faith you cannot you don't have faith if you don't hope for something so hope always comes first hope is something that holds that anchor and makes you um, you know use exercise your faith in believing so hope is something that continues and produces perseverance it produces great faith it produces love okay hope is what keeps uh, keeps keeps uh, produces consistency um you know again the, there are scriptures that that are there so you know if you want you can just take some time and read read it but in first thessalonians 1 3 it talks about how um not seizing uh, your work of faith or your, or your labor of love okay you don't seize it because of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus because of the hope that we have in who God is so it makes us consistent it makes us stronger it gives us a renewed sense of energy and enthusiasm hope also produces stability it, it uh, hope is like the anchor of the soul Okay, um, as it, it talks in Hebrews 6 19, it says, Hope is like the anchor of the soul that makes it sure and steadfast um, uh, on, on what is to come. And hope also produces uh, purity because 1 John 3 3 talks about that. Whoever has the hope purifies himself just as he is pure. So, as a counselor, you are to you are to be a giver of hope, and uh, and I think this is the best. The uh, I remember, um, you know, in last uh, in the last class, there is someone from the e-learning students asked uh, this very significant question: What is what do you think is um, what do you think is um, um, more helpful? I think he used the word Christian or uh, biblical counseling. Uh, I and I think one of the biggest factors that separates this two is the hope, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus that no matter even if the circumstances don't pan out the way that you would like to there is um, you still have an eternal hope you still have a living hope that he walks with you through this time uh, that kind of a hope and assurance people who are not in in faith or in in belief don't find because there's nothing that they can anchor their hearts to nothing that they can catch on to so hope in the living god becomes one of those significant um uh um, you know deciding uh, factors of of uh, how a person begins to heal or how a person deals with with situations that they may be going through okay uh, quickly other other elements is one is, is the next one is um, a, a christian counselor needs to be an activator of change so you know when when we looking at um, uh, and and i'd like to bring up that um, uh, scripture there in which is in Ephesians it says when we are in Christ we learn to keep aside our selfish carnal ways of living and we renew our hearts and minds and put on the new ways of living 
in a manner that is worthy of the Lord so that we can please him and as a result we will bear bear fruits so so um that's the that's something that you you want to move your counsel into to be able to lay aside everything that uh, hinders and take on everything that uh, you know putting on that new nat nature which is uh, which god uh, god has given us and as we as we keep putting on that nature to be more like god to be more truly righteous and holy in him okay so um so when we're looking at christian counseling it is a ministry where you seek to come alongside another person to help them cope with whatever issues they may have <clears throat> in life and in accordance with the word of god and guidance of the holy spirit come to a place of transformation and change okay and uh, so th so that you're you're helping them move into uh, different elements of maturity where they may be uh, you know just Ob being obedient in a specific situation and also in learning how to um, have a change in their character change in uh, or growth in the way that they they are as individuals so that's the thing of being able to help them to come to a place of change okay the third one is to motivate practice of scriptures at even problem areas and um, so what what as a christian counselor we're also going to be doing is to help them come to a place in a right relationship with god so that is a motivation you're motivating them you don't force them or uh, push them push it down their throat you're motivating them to come to a place of not just listening to god's word but also doing what it says because uh, you know that scripture in james 122 says if you're not doing that you're fooling yourselves self okay you're, you're not fooling anybody else if you think that whatever you're doing or you're walking in a place of sin is um you know uh, fooling everybody else no you're actually fooling yourself so coming to a place where you just don't listen to god's word but you're also doing what it says uh, another key element is being compassionate now what does compassion mean compassion um uh, sorry i think i lost the yeah okay so compassion what does compassion mean compassion means to feel um uh, to feel very strongly or to feel very uh, deeply within um to to have a, a sense of empathy or a sense of how someone else would be distressed at the suffering at their own suffering and uh, um, so what does compassion involve compassion involves in involves the counselor being engaged in the life of the counselee or in the heart of the counselee so it is compassion also means to um, uh, rely upon the power of god um, in order to also avoid things like despair or discouragement or burnout you know sometimes uh, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us have noticed you know there are times especially when you go to hospitals you know doctors who've been working for years um seasoned doctors at a point of time when you meet them you know for very many years they've lost compassion they don't treat the patient as a person they treat them as a problem and you can immediately sense that in the way they engage with their patients so if counselors can tend to become discompassionate because of the kind of that, you know uh, often because of the many stories they hear the burnout they feel maybe they're going through their own struggles and not really able to help and encourage so this compassion that we are talking about can only come from that reliance upon the power of god and we see um, you know that was what marked 
the ministry of Jesus. You know, he was moved with compassion. Many scriptures say that, and there are a couple of verses that are there. He was he moved, he was moved with compassion and reached out and he touched them. He saw the multitude and he was filled with compassion. Uh, and he, you know, he says, especially I think uh, with the 5,000, yeah, it was the 5,000 when he said, he said, you know, I feel sorry for them that they have not eaten for so many days. Now this, this is what, uh, moving out is you now despite <clears throat> the um, you know the the time and constraints and the uh, um, energy that that Jesus did put in he continued to show compassion because you know in in uh, I think it was in Mark six thirty four it says um, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Okay, so it, he he was in a place where he moved with compassion. That's exactly what we as a Christian counselor also to do. Um, the last one for 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 this is to be able to use wisdom. So wisdom, when we minister to people, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> should be rooted <coughs> in our relationship with God, and it should be based on the Word of God. The wisdom that we use should be that which is rooted in our relationship with God, as well as in the study of the word. Because, you know, scripture talks of that, of how the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So to be able to bring about help, bring about um, wisdom, assistance, guidance, to be able to uh, be in the wisdom of God, to fear the Lord, because it is the foundation of all wisdom, and also to use wisdom. The wisdom from above is pure. The wisdom from above is gentle. It is without hypocrisy. It is without partiality. So th this is the wisdom that we we use when when um, when we help uh, when we help um, uh, our, our our clients, our uh, counselees. Okay, so. Uh, quickly, these are some. There are a lot more, but then you know, just I've just kind of picked up uh, a few from here, so just so that we can, um, uh, uh, you know, consolidate a few of these these elements that we have. Is there any? Do you all have any questions? Um, we have around two or three minutes um, before we uh, stop. Maybe close for a break. Is there any questions on elements of a of a Christian counselor? <laughs> <clears throat> Ma'am, can I ask? Yes, Avani, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, when you talk about compassion, uh, one one thought that was coming to my heart was that um, uh, having a compassion without experiencing and going through that pain, is it uh, possible? Okay. So um, this is something that we will be doing in a, in a class later on, and it is called, what it is called is entering into the frame of reference of the individual you're talking to, okay? So um, you're right that you may not understand the depth of the um, situation, or feel compassionate for the depth that they have going that they're going through, but what you are doing um, as one of the skills is when you enter, uh, in in simple words, when you enter into the shoes of somebody else, and that happens not by imagining, but that happens when you give a year of listening and go and give uh, attention to certain details of uh, of the person's life okay so as they um so very often you know maybe as a novice counselor when someone is talking about their situation they will say um you know i i my, uh, a family member died last week and i am I'm very um, grieved. Okay, so an amateur or a or a you know a counselor, maybe not with much of an experience, um, will try and attempt 
to take away whatever grief or sadness or frustration that they may be feeling, but avoid because of their lack of experience to keep them grounded in understanding that situation a lot more. So to help them to maybe talk about the death, talk about what took place, talk about the memories of the person actually brings to life or throws a new picture about, you know, you're actually painting a picture in your imagination about what they are saying. A very good storyteller actually will help you to live a story well, right? Now, that doesn't mean that all your counselees need to be good storytellers. As a counsellor, you should be able to elicit that kind of an information or that kind of uh, feelings that's going through, okay? So that it helps you to be able to paint the picture or paint the imagination of what the person was going through. So yes, it is possible, but of course it does require um, uh, experience. It does require practice. Um, just being able to stay in that moment to hear those stories so that you can, uh, you can um, extend compassion. I hope I answered that, Avni. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, Samuel, I think you have a question. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have two questions, uh, but I could ask them after the break. Uh, if you want to. Yeah, I think we'll uh, uh, come back from the break and you can ask the question, Samuel. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So it's 10.52 on my clock and we will be back at 11.02. Have a good coffee break. 